Okay, mate. Time for the big one, the Everest. Um, let's unpack it. We like to do this every year, punters. We like to go balls deep, as I like to put it. Um, runner by runner analysis in the big race. So basically what we'll do here, we're going to go through 1 to 12 and we're going to sort the pretenders from the contenders. Okay, and so what that means is we're going to basically be telling you which horses can win, which horses can't. So you know every single one of our opinions on every single one of these runners when it comes time for you to look through that form book and make your pick on Everest Day. Okay, let's just first, Nick, what are your initial thoughts before we go through the speed map and then go through runner by runner? <coughs> what, are, what are your thoughts on the field that's been assembled? Yeah, the field's pretty average. Um, think about it's your favourite, so that's the first thing that comes up. I Wish I Win was probably going to be your favourite until the barrier draw. Private Eye looks pretty good. There's Yeah, I honestly could have six or seven different looks in this in this race, so I'm keen to get into some analysis with you, mate. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Uh, let's start as... Everyone should really start when unpacking such a big race. And that's the speed map. This speed map's brought to you by RaceNet. I got it off there. Um, I'll probably flash it up on the screen if we do have the videos up, just so you, the punters, can look at it yourself. So essentially, the way they've mapped this race, they've got Overpass as the clear leader with Hawaii Five O with the potential to push up and sit just outside it, if not right behind it. Then you've got Cylinder and Alcohol Free to also push forward and challenge Overpass to make sure he doesn't get it his own way. Then you've got the likes of Marzu and In Secret sitting behind them. Then Think About It sitting right at the top of the midfield, followed by your Private Eyes, your SB owners, and your I Wish I Wins. They don't think I Wish I Win gets sucked all the way back from that inside barrier. We'll go into that. I seem to think otherwise, but we'll go into that. Um... And then, yeah, you've got Espiona sitting outside him. And then all the way at the tail, you have Shinzo and Buenos Notches. That's according to them. Of course, this can all go out the window come race time. If one horse decides to, you know what, I'm going to do it my own way. I'm going to go right to the front and try and break all their hearts, as we've seen many times before. But that's the way it's expected to go. Now, Nick, runner by runner, will go by their saddlecloths. Number one, I wish I win. Do you have him as a pretender or a contender? Ah, uh, contender for me. Um... Like I said, would have been favourite for me coming into this race before barrier draws. One of the best, if not the best in the country. Um, I really like this horse. The third place, this start, this prep was um, unlucky in the end. Didn't really do too much wrong. Just got kind of checked a little bit and then just still ran on pretty well. So I was pretty happy with that. And fi finishing anywhere behind Alligator Blood and is pretty good form to go off. Not Alligator Blood, sorry. Mr. Brightside is pretty good form to go off at the moment. Um, definitely contender for me. I think the barrier is a bit of an issue, but I think can be steered the right way um, by Luke Nolan, knows how to ride the horse. I'm not too concerned about it. I think it's um, it's probably at the right price. I think they've, they've got it pretty much spot on, um, but I think it's a genuine contender and I'm confused if you have otherwise. Look, I've got him as a contender. I'm not silly. He is the best horse in the race, so he has to be a contender. So I can't possibly pen him. I'd probably look like an absolute goose if I put a pen through him, but... My big call of the race, punters, is he will not win. You made a call similar a few years ago in the Melbourne Cup that Incentivise wasn't going to win. He was going to come second. I'm going to make that same call here. They wanted anything but barrier one punters in the lead up to that barrier draw, and they got it. The reason being, if they get too far back and have to go around them on a rock-hard deck that's running fast as it's expected, he'd have to produce a pretty freakish run. Not freakish if they decide to ride him a bit more forward and get him off the back of that midfield or even amongst the midfield like some people are predicting. I don't know. It's an interesting one. Some people are saying Barrier 1's no issue even if he does get all the way back because he drew Barrier 1 in the Memsey and look what happened. He's still got every chance in the race. But punters, I'll tell you that much, he had more horses carting him into the race. Wasn't as soft as a tempo as it's expected to be on the weekend or as moderate, they're not expected to go as fast. Plus, he had an extra 200 metres to run it out in the MZ. That's a 1,400 metre race. He's back to 1,200 metres here, off of a seven-week break. Interesting, but, I mean, it's Peter Moody. I won't uh, doubt him. But, yeah, I think if he gets sucked all the way back, I can't see him winning. I can see him only running for second. If they decide to ride him more forward, of course, he can stalk him. If a gap opens up when they fan come the straight, he can definitely get through. But... I don't know. If he was drawn wider, I could entertain him as a win bet. But at the price he's currently, 
I think he's not a win bet, but he's definitely going to be flying down the finish. Include him in your exotics. He should be placing. Yeah, that's fair enough. When I when I look at it, especially one of these big races, um, obviously every every horse, every um, trainer and jockey are going in with a with a plan, right? So I think um, I wish I win goes in with a pretty solid plan to try and stalk that pace, try and get there without using too much petrol, try and get into a good spot, and then race through on the outside. I think that's the plan. Obviously, it's going to try and set with. Um, it'll be hard so from that inside it, it to is get gonna, all the way to the outside. It is going to be hard, but it's going to come down to on the day the jockey i think the jockey has a big 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 play on this one um it can come down to a win or a loss from luke nolan if he runs an absolute page mate if nolan decides to ride him for luck and gets him up he's yeah so i think he needs to take luke nolan needs to take every chance he can get with this horse um i think it's a good like it's a decent chance it's not impossible i think he's more likely to steer it in the right direction than the wrong direction but um if he gets that absolute gap and not many um, horses are challenging him, I think he's a genuine chance, in my opinion. All right, mate. Number two, Private Eye. Another good one. Um, was probably one of my one of my tips leading into it. Um, it seems to be. I think we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. A bit of a forgotten horse. Hundred um, percent. Always is forgotten. Always is, and it seemed to get finally get some recognition leading into six dollars into this one punters. Um, Nash retains the ride here. Pretty interesting. I'm not too sure. I literally had it as one of my good chances, but I I would have wanted a bit more value for it to punt on personally. But um, at the eight to nine dollar mark, but six dollars, okay, you can entertain it with me. Um, one first up obviously has run an Everest before. One second last year. Second year. Second last year and ran pretty well. Um, no one expected Private Eye to do that either. So I think it's a genuine contender. I think Nash is an absolute brilliant jockey and um, it comes down to the big races. And yeah, He's a big race jockey. He is. So, Private Eye is a, a contender. Yeah, contender for me. He's one of my leading contenders. I would have preferred him to have ideally drawn maybe barriers five to eight, somewhere around that middle where they can do whatever they want. They can push forward. They can sit back. But from barrier nine, he's probably forced to try and get over and get a little bit of cover. Uh, he drew barrier three last year when he was able to come second. So it's a big difference here. But um, luckily for us punters who are thinking that he's a top chance, he can do it with cover or without cover. Some horses can't stand three wide, no cover. Private Eye is a horse that can get it done as he did last start when he was first up. Absolutely blitzed them when he lobbed completely wide, no cover, just ran down the outside and put him away with his fantastic turn of foot. Um, but let's just look at it, though. Barrier 9, three wide, no cover when he won the Nature Strip Stakes last year. Barrier 11, when he won... Uh, sorry, that was Barrier 9, his first up run. Barrier 11 last year, when he smashed them down the outside, three wide, no cover in the Nature Strip Stakes. So he's no stranger to the wide barrier and wide, no cover, like I said. Nash, freakish form right now. He is getting up left, right and centre. He's a big-time jockey. I'm happy to have him as one of the top seeds. He's going to throw everything into him to try and get him over that line. So he's definitely one of my top contenders. As we move into number three, the other Joe Pride horse, the other one from Proven Thoroughbreds, they would be licking their lips right now, having two horses in the race. Think about it. Yeah, you. just before we get into think about it, you got to ask yourself when it comes into these owners and these trainers that have two horses in a race like this, do they take someone else out to better one of the other ones bit chances. of team racing yeah a bit of team racing going on and i think you can definitely entertain the fact maybe not with these two yeah but um it's very much so frowned upon but there's calls of it all the time in the racing world yeah i i, I wouldn't it's the most money race and i think it's definitely something that they're thinking about i don't know probably not with these two these two are probably two of the leading chances if it gets the right run it can probably both win but maybe yeah. when we get into a bit of godolphin a bit later who knows? There Maybe if the Eduardo got... was in this year, send him out to blitz them. So think about it, can run over the top. I could definitely see that being happening. I but don't think these two, but we'll yeah. get into a bit later. I just wanted to bring that um, little form into it. You can think about as well, um, if you pardon the pun. So think about it here. I don't know how you can say it's a pretender. It's a definite contender, favourite for a reason. 10 wins out of 11. It's one on all types of track. It's... um. Yeah, especially it's coming into pretty nice weather coming into Saturday. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a hot day. Yeah. 
it's going <coughs> to be very dry, and he is eight from eight on dry tracks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, great horse. Another one. So just one against um, Hawaii Five O. Yep. Is another one in this one that I respect pretty highly as well. Hawaii Five O. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to be obviously the leading chance, and there's no way you can tell me otherwise. It's got a perfect barrier. I think it's absolute tune. It's I don't prime. think I could ask for anything else. To think about it. Yeah, another leading contender in my mind. I wouldn't be surprised if he runs the Quinella with Private Eye, honestly. Um, he's only been defeated once in his career. He's won an incredible eight straight. He, you know, like I said, eight from eight on the dry. I mean, he's undefeated at the distance. He's undefeated at the track. Every single thing points to a very, very positive run from Think About It. Um, I mean, take a sit, ride for luck, push forward, whatever they want from that draw. He can do it, and he's done it in all of his starts so that he can run from anywhere they want. He is the ideal horse to have in a race like this, and shout out to their owners, because even though they don't get the full chunk of the prize money because of the whole slot ownership and the way that works, they only purchased him for pennies compared to some of the others in this field. You know, I think it was less than 50000 so shout out to them for getting an absolute barjane. So, mate, Marzu now, um, third in last year's race, not as big as a chance this year, in my opinion. How about yours? Yeah, I've got my opinions on Marzu. I said it about it in the podcast a couple of weeks back. Um, I think it's a pretender. Um, it's past its prime. It's done what it can. It's, um, apart from that third place last year in the Everest, I think it's pretty much done now. Um, $71.15 for a place. If you really want to go for some value, by all means, like no one's not a chance in this race. But um, for sake of sake i think there's a lot of better horses in this tommy berry's very good as well but yeah that that first up just didn't look that good came ninth from 12th behind private eye four lengths behind um yeah i think i think it's just a pretender i don't think there's too much to go yeah on. it's my first pretender of the field if he'd drawn in he was right into it but he's drawn all the way out um barry 11 wouldn't be surprised honestly if they scratched and took an emergency maybe you know you've got those emergencies bell and Nipatina, king of sparta valana and zapatero waiting in the wings um but if he does run they'll need to either work him hard to push forward or they'll have to ride for luck towards the rear which i said for i wish i win would be hard let alone marzu so i, I think top four at best midfield finish most likely for marzu um, as we move into overpass, and I've got him as a very strong contender thanks to that barrier draw, what are your thoughts on the Derby Racing Syndicate uh, representative overpass? Yeah, great horse. Um, it's probably going to lead, like we've said. Um, it's going to probably dictate the tempo. Um, beat Amelia's Jewel, so obviously it's a great horse because Amelia's Jewel is a great horse in my opinion. Um, unpopular opinion on this podcast apparently. <laughs> Um, we also pretty ran pretty nicely with Giga Kick um, as well. So thirteen dollars and three dollars seventy. I can definitely respect a bet on it, and I can definitely call it a contender. It can dictate exactly how it wants to run. I think there's nothing that can say that it can't win. Yeah, hundred percent. I've got him as a contender. I had him marked as a pretender pre barrier draw. I thought top four best chances for him because I thought he'd just get run over the top after, you know, working a bit hard to get to that lead. But from that second barrier, he's going to grab that rail and go, go, go. Um, he's the only clear leader in the race. He should get every chance in the world, especially if he sets a bit of a cheeky quick sectional mid-race and then catches them lacking and then just goes around that turn and bursts down the straight and they just can't catch him because he's run away from them. Um, however fast he goes determines if those back markers are going to be able to get into it. If he decides to drop the anchor on them, goodbye back markers but if he decides to go really fast it's anyone's game um i think him to place is probably one of the better bets of the day currently at three dollars forty to place 370 now. 370 to place i think overpass to place is probably if you don't want to find a winner here because it's so open get on him to place because i think the way it's going to work is he's going to look the winner for a very long way and he's either going to go all the way with it or they're just going to absolutely swoop him in that last 50 meters but he is going to hang on for a place. I'd be very surprised to see him finishing outside that top four, top five, top six. He's going to be in the finish. So I reckon 370 for a place is great value. Um, we move to Buenos Noches, Nick. I'm going pretender here. It could be one of the more ones that is a bit there there, but um, I can't give everyone a contender spot. So I just think there's better chances in this race. No no slack to this horse, no slack to Dylan Gibbons. Um 
I just think there's better horses in this race. There's um, better suited ones. It's probably got the best barrier. Um, it could have got, if it got anything on the outside, it was definitely a pretender. So that helps if you really want to go there. Punters um, had a nice run behind Private Eye and Overpass in that same race. But um, yeah, I'm not too sure if I would put my money there. So $15 and $4.20, I'm going to call it a uh, pretender. Fair enough. So I've, I've got him as a contender just. Needs to be considered a threat thanks to his blinding turn of foot. The barrier was not totally ideal, but Gibbons can do what he wants from there. He can take him all the way to the back or he can try and slot in amongst the pack. He will show his hand late and a win would be the furthest thing from the shock. He's probably the pure, the measuring stick when it comes to pretender versus contender. He is right on the fringe. He's the one that if overpass goes quick, he comes right into it. If the Yankee gets dropped, rule him out. But he is just thunderous with his turn of foot. And imagine if Dill Gibbons gets up, an apprentice winning the Everest. Oof. Yeah, wow. Huge. But um, Hawaii Five O. Hawaii Five O. I think it's a contender. Um, look to say you don't retain Nash Waller, but then you get James McDonald. It's pr- not really a loss, though, is it? So yeah, you probably not an upgrade, not <laughs> a downgrade. You just one amazing jockey jumps off, another one jumps on. Um, so you can't complain if um. Got a bit of a better barrier, probably would have been one of my better tips. Could have, would have, probably would have led into the nine, ten dollar mark, sitting at just over thirteen at the moment. So, yeah, I'm not too sure, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go contender. I think it's a decent chance. J Mac is always good. Um, finishing just behind. Think about it, it's great form to go off, and I've said. Um, think about it, it's my probably my best chance of the race. So, Hawaii Five O. What a peach of a run it was last start. So. Give it a go if you want to. So, contender. Yeah, contender for me as well. Uh, he's a horse that probably prefers a touch further. Probably one that's going to like to get over the 1,300, 1,400 uh, metres as he progresses throughout his career. But he most certainly can figure here. From that barrow, you think he has to push forward a touch um, and sit off the pace to be any shot. And race net with that speed map like we went through earlier seems to think he does. Um, as he's a run-on type, You'd, he hopes they go fast first up. That is, if he ends up taking a sit behind overpass and he's not in the one-to-one position, because the faster they go, the better his chances become when it comes into going around that turn and really building that momentum. Uh, J-Mac, like you said, jumping on, that's huge. Rarely rides for Gay, but he wins 25% of races when he rides for Gay and he places in 52% of them punters. So don't be surprised if J-Mac lifts him over the line and gets him right in the finish. Fair enough. We move to alcohol free number eight, fifty one dollars and eleven dollars for a place. Pretender. Um, yeah. I don't want to go on too much about it. I just don't think it's good enough. They're going for as much prize money as they can get. But this could be another one, punters, where I say bit of teamwork here. Both um, Waterhouse trains. Look, it's frowned upon, but look, who knows? Yeah, I mean, to be fair though, if alcohol free goes out and absolutely smashes them there will be calls of it on track They'll, there will be people screaming it if alcohol free goes right to the front and just runs 10.30 sectionals and then Hawaii Five O comes running over the top but I mean yeah this is the only horse that I could genuinely put a pen through this horse is not winning but last year I said that about Giga Kick was the only horse that I was putting a pen through and look what happened but I mean I'd, it's the only horse I would genuinely be shocked if it got up Purchased for $10 million for this race specifically and turned out to be a bit of a flop. So they're up shit creek without a paddle. I, my thought is that they went chasing Imperatriz and they said no yet again. Um, but it's a free shot for them. Like, they'll have to make the money back on the um, on the breeding now. But they own the horse. They own the race. Anything's a bonus for them. They'll be hoping she finishes midfield, which is probably uh, what she's going to do. Weirdly, Nick, she's nominated for the Cox Plate. As well, she's paid up for the last exceptions for the Cox Plate. That's weird. Everest into a Cox Plate. Yeah, you haven't seen that before. So, so I think they're literally just trying to get as much prize money out of her as yeah, they can. Just grasping at straws at the at the moment. But so. um, we move to in secret. Zaki Purton comes from Hong Kong. Yes. So always a positive. Eleven dollars, three dollars forty for her in secret. Um, look, I think the barrier kills her. Yeah, I think that's her issue. If she gets a better barrier, she's one of my better chances. Uh, I think she's a pretender. I think I can respect her better on her. It's a definitely at her best distance. Um, 
and Zach Purton is a great, great jockey. And you also, it's not too much of a big deal in the bigger races, in the uh, in the shorter races like the Everest at the 1200. But she loses, first um, horse that we've had so far that loses two kilos on her opponents. Oh, no, sorry, uh, apart from alcohol free. So yeah. um, if you want to read in the, to that punters, there's that as well. But um, personally, I think at the 1200, weight is not one of your things that, is as majorly important. Unless it's that five kilo swing that the three-year-olds get. Yeah. Um, pretender for me, sadly, because she was my top contender all the way until that barrier got drawn. 100%. Uh, um, as you would have heard in the stats, um, no horse has won from barrier wider than 10. To be fair, six-year-old race, they're not as relevant as some races, but still 12th barrier is not ideal, especially for a horse like that. She had the prime setup coming into it with the prime form line, but I just can't see her winning from that draw. She'll probably get trapped without cover, and I think she needed to be settling closer to them to be any chance, and I just don't think she does. Um, so pretender for me. I can only see placings at best for her from that draw. I'd love to see her win it, be the first female winner, but unfortunately, I just think she's a pretender. Now, Espiona, another female horse in here. I think she's a pretender. Nick, what do you think? Tough. It's tough. You're Mr. Espiona. I am Mr. Espiona. I think um, for this race, it's a pretender, but only because it, I just don't... Uh, I think they kind of... Not really panicked, I'd say, but they've kind of just settled with Espiona in the end. Like, she was racing at the 1400. And yeah, she's not back. a sprinter. They're, like, I just don't see the point in her being in this race i do think she's gonna have a good spring um but i just don't think this is her race so i'm gonna go pretender for me yeah pretender for me like we all decided last prep that she was only good in melbourne and only good at the middle distance then all of a sudden she's a sydney sprinter like doesn't make sense to me i mean chris waller's the smartest man in racing but like you said i think again another situation up shit creek without a paddle like they wanted nature strip obviously my thought process, maybe they were trying to get Zoo Gotcha there in the end because they were focusing her at the sprints when she's more of a middle distancer. But then Espiona comes out and uh, Does absolutely it has a pretty good start blitzes the prep, them so. over 1,400 metres. But look at the stats, punters. Five out of her six career wins at 1,400 metres or above, her only win on the short curls was her very first career start back as a three-year-old. So she's drawn well. I think she'll be in that stalking position her best can get her over the top, but I just think she'll take too long to get going. She'll yeah. just take too long, and she'll be like Marzu last year, I think, if it can get going and get into that placings. But I don't think her best, her motor will kick in till the 100 meter mark, and they might already be gone from her. So maybe top four, maybe put her in your exotics, but I can't have her as a winning chance. All right, mate, we move to Shinzo, the first ever Group One, not Group One, sorry, Golden Slipper winning Colt. To try and tackle this race. My God, if he wins Golden Slipper Everest, the rich get richer, as they say, and too bad because it's Cornwall owned. So no common men gets a chunk of that uh, money. It's just the uh, the aristocrats up in the boxes just getting richer. Um, contender or pretender, mate? Yeah, if it wins, it definitely gets sent to the stud barn, I reckon, in my opinion. Just gets even more money. They're just going to be money upon money for Shinzo if it wins I'm going pretender only because it pulled up lame last start I just don't I can't have my money on a horse that pulled up lame first up um, obviously Waller knows what he's doing but um, yeah pulling up lame is never a good sign leading into an Everest yeah they <coughs> trialed him they decided he was good enough they waited for the trial to confirm the slot they were happy with the way he trialed. They reckon they've worked out the kinks. And they know that Chris Waller horses, they tend to explode second up. But either way, I just can't have him. I'm very rarely on horses straight after they've pulled up lame. And it's the same here. I mean, if he gets up, probably the ones that I'd be more shocked at. But wouldn't be surprised in the end. It's Waller. He's a genius. But um, yeah, I just can't have him purely because he pulled up lame. So pretender Shinzo. Then we move to Cylinder, who I've got as a genuine contender. He's the three-year-old that I've got yep. as the... In it up to his neck contender. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I 100% agree. Um, I think he's a contender. $8.50, $2.90 for a place. Gets a decent barrier, barrier four. Um, At the distance, obviously, three starts, two wins, and one second place being that slipper. Um, Hasn't really put a foot wrong 
this prep at the 1400 um that's another thing coming back to the 1200 around the 1400 um last start but yeah finishing behind and cap and militarized wasn't too bad of a run um those horses were just better on the day but the two starts before that at the 1100 and 1200 were awesome so um i can definitely respect a respect a bet on it it's going to be a definite contender for me um as well as the good track record seven starts three wins and then the rest in the placing so it hasn't missed the placings when it's a firm deck so um Definitely an exotics play, but I definitely think it's a contender as well. Yeah, he's ended up to his neck again. Zach Lloyd on board. It'd be awesome if a, an apprentice gets up and wins this Everest. Um, champagne would be flowing at the Doncaster later on when they all gather. Um, look, he's been up for a while. That's the only way I see him not running well here. The fact that he's been up for a while, maybe he's a bit busted, but if he holds his condition, he can do anything. He can stalk overpass wherever he goes, sitting right behind him. He can also push up and sit one-to-one with him on the outside to put a bit of pressure on him. Um, he's done little to no wrong in his career, as you mentioned. I'm getting serious yes, yes, yes vibes. The uh, the winner of the third ever Everest came from the Golden Rose, had a very almost identical setup to Cylinder here. Uh, I mean, he's a genuine top four uh, horse, in my opinion. I think he will be finishing in that first half of the pack. So contender for Cylinder there. All right, mate. We've sorted the pretenders from the contenders. We know who you think can win the race from the contenders. Now, give me your top pick out of that. Who is your money going on? All right, punters, you're going to come screaming at me and I can already picture the uh, comments on TikTok. But it's going to be think about it for me. $4.40 for the win. Favorite for a reason. Hasn't put a foot wrong in its career apart from that one start where it came third. But wow. Um, just, I, I literally can't explain more why apart from what I said before. Four starts at the distance, four wins. Eight starts at the good track, eight wins. It's it's definitely got the best chance. It's going to, yeah, I think it's I think it's the winner. Fair enough, mate. I'm going for the uh, Pride Quinella, as I mentioned earlier. Private eye for me. Uh, I think the barrier is no knock for him. Other horses that would keep him, uh, have him come undone for him, like I mentioned. He can do it without cover if he needs to. He ideally gets cover. If he doesn't get it, I think he is still a very, very good chance. I think he waits for his moment. He bursts clear late, as he did last year, but he goes one better. Nash Rorilla is in incredible form. He is going to scrub the absolute ears off him. He's going to throw the kitchen sink at him to make sure he gets the most out of this horse. I think he can get him over the line here. I'm happy to be on him. $6 to win, $2.20 to place each way. I think that price may drift on the day as well, especially once that world pool comes into it. I think the money will come for other horses and Private Eye might drift out to that $7, $7.50 range, but I'm happy with whatever price he is. Private Eye for me in the Everest. Now, Nick, we know you're on Think About It, but who is your first four over the line? Uh, in no particular order, I've got Think About It, Overpass, Hawaii Favo, and Cylinder as my four. But I'd also, if I was putting a box on, I'd chuck I Wish I Went in there as well just to be safe, which I have on double. Fair enough, mate. It's up on Dabble now. Make sure to go there and uh, download Dabble today. You can use the code MOCKSPORTS when signing up to let them know we sent you to get on all of our Everest Day bets. Uh, I am going to putting be putting mine on. Mine is Private Eye to win, obviously. Uh, then I think I Wish I Win comes second, as I claimed earlier. Then Overpass, third. Think About It comes fourth. But I think it'll be very, very close finish. The way the track's playing, very fast, I think, you know, like I said, Overpass will be up there and might get swooped. All the swoopers will come right at the last second. I think one, one and a half, two lengths, Max is going to split that first four, five, six over the line. So I think, yeah, Private Eye, I wish I win, Overpass, and think about it for me, mate. And that wraps up our runner by runner analysis, sorting the pretenders from the contenders of the Everest. We hope you enjoyed it, punters. We're going to be having them for all the big races. That's the Caulfield Cup, the Cox Plate, the Melbourne Cup, and the Golden Eagle as well. So look forward to that. All right, punters, that concludes our runner by runner analysis of this year's edition of the Everest. We hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to give us a like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested in hearing the entire podcast where we unpack the entire Everest Day Randwick card with all of the Group 1s on the card as well as the Group 1s down at Caulfield, the Guineas, the Turak and the Might and Power. Make sure to tune into this week's edition of the Quaddy Potty that is out now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Also a quick shout out to our sponsors over at Stridal. 
They are the changing the game of horse ownership within Australian racing. Head to strider.com now where you can search their marketplace for the best available yearlings to purchase this racing season. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you to Strider. Head there to get shopping now.